Hello everybody, welcome. This video that you're about to see was filmed a couple of months ago. What I was going to do, I don't want this to be outdated now, I feel like I've dated this. It's not that long ago, just a couple of months ago anyway. Earlier this year, what I was going to do, sort of quarantine lockdown movie marathon video where I would watch 10 or 12 films over a couple of weeks when we were in isolation and talk about them in this one big super video and put it all together and stuff like that. But it never happened. I ended up watching more Netflix series and Disney Plus series so the video just never happened but we started it and I filmed three videos, three films um, you know, talking about the films that I watched in that sort of attempted marathon video so I'm going to release them as individual videos this one and two others that have been released sometime recently on the channel but yeah, this is one of those videos so please take it with a pinch of salt the context was it was going to be a marathon video but it wasn't anymore it wasn't to be, maybe somewhere down the line if we get a lockdown too, which is likely we'll do the marathon then but until then, this is what it was going to be and here's one of the reviews Alright, so next film in this Marathon of movies we're doing here on CM42 TV is this absolute modern day classic Django Django Unchained from 2012. I could have sworn this was 2013, but I guess in terms of the way it's released, in terms of like America to here and to other places around the world, I guess it was 2012. But in my head, this has always been up there as one of like Tarantino's best ones. But I feel like I've only watched that a couple of times and I've always known in my head, like, okay, Django's great. Um, you know the way you just hear the name Django and you just immediately associate it with a great film. It's funny actually, my uh, friend Anwar was actually texting me the other night and he basically said that him and his roommate Fraser um, watched uh, The Hateful Eight for the first time ever. And I've been you know raving about it for years because it's my second favourite Tarantino film, right behind Pulp Fiction. Um, my, my second favourite would be The Hateful Eight and my third would be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood which of course was just last year um, and then and then Anwar said that Django is his first favourite, it's his number one favourite Tarantino and I was like, do you know what, I've not seen Django in ages um, I'm going to watch it because you know in this quarantine sort of time I have been very you know sporadic in terms of my movie nights um, just randomly I've been watching some more shows and some more wrestling and that sort of thing as if I could watch more wrestling but you know what I mean so the idea of watching this one just setting a night aside to watch this one was very appealing and I'm so glad I did watch this last night Jamie Foxx just unbelievable and it's so funny as well when you think of like big films like the, one of the, in terms for me anyway one of the first things I think about is, is how great the acting was and then you think about like how great the cinematography is and then how great the soundtrack is and then how great the um, you know, the writing is and all that stuff, you know, the soundtrack, did I say soundtrack? All these different things you think about in terms of a film, but to me, when I think of a Tarantino film, I almost don't even think about that stuff. I almost just, I'm like, it'll just surprise me with anything you've got. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing it and it's going to be great. Like, seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last year, like, you get Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio and Margot Robbie, you know, in there and you're just like, you don't even think about these are three of the greatest actors ever because it's a Tarantino film. You're going to see this film that you, you could be, it could be anything, you know, you could be surprised in any second, you know, and you are in that film and you are to an extent in this film as well. Such an unbelievable story. This one, best original screenplay at the Oscars in 2012 and best supporting actor, I guess, for who? For Christoph Waltz? Christoph Fox in this film is great. And then of course you got the famous scene with DiCaprio where he breaks the glass. And that was kind of annoying me, you know, at times. People saying, you know, DiCaprio is such a great actor because, you know, when he when he when he broke the glass and, you know, his hand was bleeding, he just carried on in the scene. And my argument towards that was, well, yeah, he's Leonardo DiCaprio, he's one of the greatest actors ever. That's what a good actor does. He's just put if you're on stage and something like that happens, you can't go, sorry lads. Uh, give me a minute, I need to tidy up the blood. You don't say that, you know, when you're a, when you're a trained actor or whatever. So when you're DiCaprio, you know, you're this known actor, you know, you can stop. You know, and he's in the and if someone like DiCaprio who's so mesmerising and polarising with his acting, and when he's in character, he is in character. Like the whole reverend thing, you know, just just get himself so down and so grizzled and so distraught for this role. Um, and then like the Wolf of Wall Street thing, becoming that character, and then other films that he's done, obviously. That's him. He, when he's that actor, he just becomes the role and he, you know, takes over him. So, you know, when he's in this over-the-top costume, with these over-the-top lines and this monologue he's doing, and he's in the moment and he slams his hand on the table, 
and the glass goes everywhere and he cuts his hand and there's blood everywhere. The last thing he's thinking about doing is stopping, you know? So that always annoyed me, but when you watch this scene, you kind of realise it's like he starts using the blood to his advantage and he starts kind of licking it and like looking at it and showing it to the camera and stuff. He actually wipes it on Kerry Washington's face at one point as well. She's great as well. And I, I mean, I'm talking about, you don't think about the acting and the cinematography and the writing and that sort of thing in a Tarantino film. They're all still there. Like the acting in this, the performances in this film are just surreal. So good. Um, and DiCaprio was one of them, and Christoph Waltz was one of them, and you know, uh, and Sam Jackson, my god, what a weird, weird seeing Sam Jackson in a role like this, you know? Someone that you don't like. Like, Sam Jackson is such a likeable, you know, actor. Jamie Foxx, what can you say? Just so good. Um, I guess people who haven't seen it, it's basically this, this slave is freed by a bounty hunter from Germany who goes and tries to find these these killers, these wanted men to get a bounty and he knows that this slave knows these people so he could use this slave for help, you know, so he frees this slave to come be his partner as bounty hunters and they become such a good team. He, uh, he They become partners for good and then, you know, what's the one thing you want to do when you become a free man, he says to Django and Django says, I want to go and free my wife. So they track down his wife, they go to this big house called Candyland, owned by DiCaprio and uh, they try to free Kerry Washington, who is Jamie Foxx's wife. They track her down, they try to free her, and then all hell breaks loose. And there's, there's a big scene at the house, at DiCaprio's house, where there's just loads and loads of killings and that sort of thing, you know? Um, this big moment between Christoph Waltz and DiCaprio. Um, and then Christoph Waltz just goes, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. And there's this big shootout that happens and stuff. And I could have sworn that was the end of the film. You know, I just totally forgot that there's a whole other section. Walter Goggins pops up, who was in, who's a massive part in The Hateful Eight, who is an amazing actor, so funny, who has, you know, done his best work in these, you know, Tarantino films to what I've seen anyway. And there's this scene where Jamie Foxx is hanging upside down and he's naked, and he's going to, like, just, like, chop his balls off and, like, Walter Goggins' face, he's, like, enjoying this sadistic act. It's just hilarious to see, you know? And then there's all this other stuff that happens that it's just, it's just an amazing ending and I can't believe I forgot about it. It just shows you how long ago it was that I'd watched this and I'd seen this and fully appreciated it. So, so happy I went back to it. So happy as part of this marathon. I can't recommend Django enough and it is up there. Top five favourite Tarantino films. As it stands right now, I'd go Pulp Fiction, The Hateful Eight, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Django, and then maybe go Jackie Brown after that. That's another one I should watch really soon. Jackie Brown, you know, I've not seen that in a, in a good three years or so. So, yeah, let's move on here in the marathon. An amazing film, Django Unchained, brilliant stuff. Can't recommend it enough to, you know, to a movie fan who likes, you know, a story and likes the acting and that sort of thing, but also just wants to chill out, watch this mesmerising film made by a mesmerising film director that you can say what you want about him, but his films are, are just, they're so interesting and so fascinating to watch, you know, so, um, yeah, let's move on, what's the next film going to be? I don't know!